scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Why do we need a yearly prophetic word to guide us? Because since God is a God of times and seasons, it then means that he's not doing the same thing every time. Is that true? That everything ultimately adds up to his, to his predetermined counsel manifest. But that in doing that, there is a sequence to the dealings of God. And that for us as a family of faith, we know that God is not always doing the same thing. And so when we wait upon the Lord to get a prophetic word, it represents for us the emphasis what god is emphasizing to us number one number two it also reveals the role that we have to play to partner with that with what god intends to do in that season alongside the blessing that now comes to us as a result of discernment and alignment very very powerful so prophetic words represent God's emphasis to a people, a community, a nation. There is always something God is doing across the earth per season. There is always something God is doing in Africa per season. There is always something God is doing in Nigeria per season. Is that true? It is your assignment to receive God's emphasis for you, for your home, for your ministry, whatever it is you are doing. A prophetic word does not just have to be for a ministry. As, a, as a, a father with your children, you can receive what is God doing. It doesn't have to come as it is the year of this. But what is God's emphasis in this season? The way God would deal with your children from 0 to 10 is not the same way he would deal with them from 10 to 20. You see that? Yes. The way God would deal with a man from 0 to 30 years is not the same way he would deal with him from 30 to say 50. It's not the way he would deal with him from 50. Your, even your emphasis as a human being changes as you transit. Is that true? I've shared with you here, I think, I, I believe, that growing up there used to be this, this hairstyle called junior and senior punk. <laughs> I can't even remember how they barb the thing. I just know they leave some hair somewhere and then the rest, they skin it. And if the barber makes any mistake, you will have a serious problem with that man because he's, he's messed up your opportunity for shining for the next one to two weeks. And it's amazing as children how that we would get angry and frown. But I sleep while they are barbing me because of the sheer level of tiredness. I find myself struggling and while they are babbing, they say, what the boss bab everything, please let me get this thing. Amazing how your emphasis changes. Is that true? Once upon a time, you will fall down and feel so embarrassed. Right now, they just say, lift your hands and you are flying all over and there's no embarrassment. Your emphasis. The same thing you did that embarrassed you, now it's not embarrassing you because your revelation has shifted. Is that true? There are three levels of the anointing in terms of God's 
dispensing the anointing to the saints number one there is the measure of anointing that comes upon believers by reason of being grafted into christ that when we are grafted into christ through the new birth experience our oneness with the holy spirit provides us access to a measure of the anointing number one number two there is a dimension of the anointing that comes upon the believer by reason of service that means when you find your place in life every time god calls you among the many things that he gives you is the backing of your call so whether it's a ministerial office or any the moment you discover your place in destiny and god is ready to begin to work with you there is a measure of anointing it does not follow you it follows the call and the office it looks like it is following you but what that anointing is really following is the call is that true physically speaking remember that sometimes when they promote you in the office there are certain privileges that are connected to you am i right on that sometimes you are given an official car you are given a house or you have to move to another quarters these privileges are not to you as a person they are to whoever occupies that office and since the occupant for that moment happens to be you because by the time you retire you return everything sometimes you can serve so faithfully they will give it to you is that true so there is the anointing that comes upon us or is within us by reason of our oneness with christ then there is the anointing that comes by reason of your call and your office but the third level of the anointing is the anointing that comes upon you because you understand what is god is doing in every season that is the anointing that comes in honor to your alignment and your discerning what god is doing per season it is possible that you can carry the grace that comes by reason of being one with christ it is possible that you can carry the grace that follows your ministerial office and you will be surprised that in a particular season and a particular move of god you are not backsliding but you are not at the forefront of what god is doing there are people like that even on earth you can't say they are exactly backsliding but you will marvel and wonder why they are not at the emphasis of what god is doing because that anointing comes through discernment you have to know what god is doing he that hath an ear he says that means nobody has it's not everybody who has that kind of ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches prophetic words help us therefore to understand god's emphasis to the end that we can align and obtain the grace that is needed for that season Are you learning koinonia? So when God speaks to us as a family of faith, that this is a year of marvelous light, it's not just a cliche. You find out that there are different words that people receive, but it now gives us an understanding of what he intends to do with us the whole idea is not just to celebrate and jump around and say marvelous light you can finish this year december and not see anything that looks like marvelous light because prophetic words do not make themselves happen they are engaged you have to understand this this charge i give unto you my son timothy paul said that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given unto you you have to engage prophecy to work for you my assignment therefore it's not just to announce to you the prophetic word you already know it many of you have accessed it for those of you who are just coming it is our year of marvelous light this is what god has declared but then let me explain a few things that will help our understanding first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 that's where we get that word first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation say amen. amen i will soon tell you what makes you chosen ye are a chosen generation then he also calls you a royal priesthood right revelations 5 verse 10 remember that we have been made unto our god kings and priests and that our jurisdiction of reign is not in heaven is here on earth and then it says we are a holy nation 
he calls us a peculiar people and then he reveals our mandate he says that we should show forth the praises is the word doxazo the displaying of the glory and the excellency of a king he says show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light marvelous light is what makes us a chosen generation marvelous light is what makes us a royal priesthood marvelous light is what makes us a holy nation and a peculiar people you know what marvelous light is marvelous light is a body of knowledge it's a body of spiritual information that has been kept it's been withdrawn from certain generations and kept for a certain time ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 and you understand what i'm saying now from verse 1 please look up Paul is speaking now. And this is what he said. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, it says, if ye have heard of the dispensation of grace, the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation, are you seeing there now? He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ he's making a defense of his knowledge read the next verse if you're a christian one to read stop which in other ages was not made known it didn't mean the people did not press the prophets desire to see it they desire to know certain things about the riches of the revealed christ I hope you know none of them understood Christ. They did not understand Jesus as Lord and Christ. That is a body of knowledge that was hidden and given to Paul. They knew that he would be Savior. They knew that he would be Messiah. But the dynamics of his ministry was not known to anybody. They had different prophetic captures. It was Paul that gave us a sound exegesis of Jesus as Savior, as Christ, and as Lord. This was his message, the Apostle Peter on the day of pentecost remember he said this same jesus whom you have crucified has now been made lord and christ so he says which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed say now revealed one more time say now revealed a function of time now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets and he said so that you don't suspect us it was revealed by the spirit because the holy ghost is not the only one who reveals <laughs> there are many other extra extra biblical approaches to accessing revelation paul is saying no matter how mysterious and difficult my exegesis of scripture is I am making a defense of my understanding that it came to me by revelation. I was given access to a body of truth that has been hidden. That the prophets and they that went before me desired to see these things, but it was not given to them. And that what qualifies you to be that peculiar people is access to marvelous light. Marvelous light. We live in a world today where information is really power. Is that true? That there are people who are, as individuals, more powerful than nations. What is their secret? The information that they have. For instance, there are companies that have access to human information and database greater than the CIA, greater than all of these people, as a company. Is that true? Facebook, Google, all these guys, they are individuals, but they are greater than nations. Nations submit to them. Why? Because of information. There is something they have. They can literally reprogram the earth at their will on the strength of what they have. So why do we accord them all the respect and the honor we give them? Not because their sizes are anything to write home about. Not because they are whatever it is. Not because they speak greater English than anybody. They have access to an information that is not available to everyone. Say light. What does marvelous light talk about? Number one, 
marvelous light refers to supernatural insight and illumination into the truths of scripture the first revelation of marvelous light is supernatural insight when we talk about the year of marvelous light we mean that a season and a moment where god will grant us unusual access to supernatural insight and illumination into the truths of scripture ephesians chapter 1 please we'll begin our reading from verse 15 ephesians 1 15 it says wherefore after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all the saints i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer huh that the lord the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you what the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse it says the eyes my goodness the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that is spiritual illumination the eyes of your understanding is like a candle but without light it cannot shine so he says being enlightened amplified says being flooded with light like light in a stadium flooded with light when you enter a stadium when all the lights are put on you will not even know whether you are in the night except you are coming from outside so you will remember that it was dark but if you slept in the afternoon and they just carried you there and you woke up you will think you were just one hour asleep because of the level of light the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance look at all the things you will know when your eyes are flooded with light next verse and what is the exceeding greatness of his power so there is power connected to light we're coming there to us what who believe according to the workings of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places 21 it says far above far above so there is far above in light there is take note of this concept that when light comes to you together with light there is power there is access to knowledge and whatever light does it does not take you down light only takes you far above far above principality power might dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but in that which is to come last verse it says and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church 23 is the last verse the fullness of him the bible says that filleth all and in all marvelous light means supernatural insight and illumination into the truths of scripture number two what is the implication of having access to marvelous light understanding understanding job chapter 32 and verse 8 job began to teach us the excellency of understanding by the spirit he says but there is 32 and 8 job 32 and verse 8 but there is a spirit in man everybody say there is a spirit in me one more time say there is a spirit in me and the bible says the inspiration the word inspiration there does, does not it doesn't just mean to inspire it's actually the word the breath the breathing is that true like how god breathed upon adam and he became a living soul it says the inspiration the breath of the almighty can give men understanding Can I tell you something? You can acquire knowledge, but you don't acquire understanding. Understanding is given. Yes, sir. You can acquire knowledge. What is understanding? The fortitude for comprehension. You can know a thing and really not know how it works. Knowledge can mean awareness of a fact. Awareness of the presence of a thing. Understanding exposes you to the dynamics of its working. 
You can know that the anointing is needed to live an excelling life. But understanding now opens you up to the dynamics of the anointing. You can know that faith is needed to rise. That's knowledge. But it takes understanding. Knowledge tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. It is understanding that answers the question, how? How do I reign? You know you should reign. That's knowledge. Understanding tells you how to reign. This year, God will show someone how. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may have been asking and saying, Lord, I know, but how? That was the question Mary asked. How shall these things be? Not will it happen. I know it will happen. But can you grant me access to how it will happen? Because I don't want to doubt. The cure to faith is understanding. When God brings you into his realm where you have a sound understanding on how he's going to do it. Then immediately you will find out that doubt and fear goes away permanently. Are you learning? Praise the Lord. Job 32 and verse 8. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty makes men of understanding when you see people who have understanding they are people who truly command results one time i was traveling somewhere i can't remember where i was going to and then there were these chinese people who wore all their this thing they wear for covid this whole thing that looks like the garment of people going to space and all of them wore all of that and i was watching and I said, wow, you mean these are the guys who attend to these things? Some of them were looking smallish, some of them were looking. Then I saw another group that were passing and those ones were engineers. They were part of a company and I think they were coming to do a project. And you would look at them and wonder. Then you would see the kind of project they are about to do. And you would size them and not find anything. There is no wow factor in them. Yet, the key is not in the size. It's in the understanding. You just give them an empty land and go to bed. You can travel anywhere you want to travel. Come back and watch a wonder. Yet you can see people who look like it, but they are not it. Because the size can show the persona that, that, that there can be a semblance of results, but there is nothing there. May this be the year you find understanding. This is not the year you should look like it, be it. Don't just look anointed, be anointed. Don't just look wise. Be wise. Don't just look like you are, you are wealthy and, and prosperous. Be prosperous. When God blessed man, he didn't say look fruitful. He didn't say look like you multiply. He didn't say look wise. No. Be. Become. Step into that experience. Receive understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. What does marvelous light mean? Marvelous light also means access to supernatural direction. Please write it down. This is very powerful. Psalm 43 and verse 3. Marvelous light means access to direction. Psalms 43 and verse 3. It says, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hills and to thy tabernacles. I want to get there, but I don't know how to get there. It says, send out thy light. Let them lead me. It takes light. Listen, no matter what kind of car you buy, once it is night, the most important component as far as you're moving forward in a dark road is concerned is the light is that true not the tire the light you can make a boast of the color of your car but it's unnecessary once it's night the one factor that matters it doesn't matter whether you're driving a rolls royce whether you are driving a toyota or just pushing something there are cars that they use for public transport you will laugh at them in the day but the light in the night can surprise you. Have you seen those kind of cars? You will just see a small thing. They can put in that car the light for a trailer. And yet it's a golf. Now it may not matter in the day. You can laugh at the creativity of the driver. He knows the business is doing. 
And he knows what can happen if there is no light in the night. There are cars that we ship in from overseas. When they come, they have extra fog lights. We do not have snow and all of these things in, largely in, in, in Nigeria. Is that true? So you find out that they just remove it because it's not needed. Light. Lead me by your light. Someone say, lead me. Psalms 119 and 105. Popular scripture. If you don't know it, you didn't go for Sunday school. Psalms 119 verse 105. Ready? One to read. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. One more time, please. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Now, you know what this talks about? A lamp to your feet means guidance. A light to your path means direction. Very important. They are not the same thing. Let me show you the difference between guidance and direction. If I want to send someone now outside to say the neighboring churches, here's how I'll give you direction. Go out from this door, turn left and go straight. Just look at the signboard. That's direction. Is that true? But let me tell you how guidance is. Guidance provides a more intricate detail. When you get there, there is a depression down. When you get there, you might need to open the door or move something. It tells you the details on how to get there. The Bible says that God's lamp, God's word, that functions both as a lamp and a light. It can give you direction and it can guide you on the steps to get there. Say amen. amen. Number four, very quickly. What is the implication of having access to marvelous light? Light in this kingdom is life. Light is literally life. John chapter 1 and verse 4. John chapter 1 and verse 4. It says, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. That means you can see it as light. Yet it is life that produced it. The more you access the light of God, the more the quality of your life, biologically and otherwise. Is that true? John chapter 8 and verse 12. John 8 and verse 12. Please pay attention to these scriptures. We're establishing the theme for the year. Then spake Jesus again, John 8 and 12. Spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, he says. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There is the light that produces life. There is the light that produces life. Everybody say life. Life does not just mean being alive. That is important. But how many of you know that you can be alive and the suffering you are going through can make you equal to a dead man? Is that true? When you are alive and all that surrounds your life is headache, troubles from one battle after the other one demonic thing after the other just when you have recovered you hear that they arrested your son is in the police station just when you are resorting that you hear again that what they treated you was the wrong thing go back again you, are, you have a problem you live that kind of life it's as if you are dead can i tell you this truly speaking the light of god can remove the sorrow component from your life do you believe what i'm sharing with you Yes, but shall have the light of life. Number five. Marvelous light means supernatural empowerment. Access to the power of God. The power of God primarily comes from his light. The power of God primarily comes comes from his light. Habakkuk chapter 3, please, from verse 3 and 4. Habakkuk chapter 3, from verse 3 and 4. God came from Teman and 
the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. I always like to read verse 4 in Amplified. Would that be possible? Verse 4, Amplified. Please give it to us. The Bible says, and his brightness was like the sunlight. Watch this. It says, rays streamed from his hand and there in that sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power. So the power of God hides in his light. I've taught you here that the anointing of the Holy Spirit has no ministry if the word of God has not gone forth. The assignment of the anointing is to validate that which has been spoken from the mouth of the Lord. So if God has not declared anything, the anointing is unfruitful until a word comes. Is that true? Yes. You can see a military man, you can see people in the force, they can stand very inactive because there is no command. But once there is a decree, that's it, they begin to move. That's how the word of God is. Supernatural empowerment. Say power. Can I tell you, these are the days of the power of God. And when I talk about the power of God, by now you know that I'm not just talking about falling down under the anointing and rising. That is the process of receiving the power. If all the power of God does is to throw men down, it is not worth receiving. Are we together? Let me tell you what the power of God does. The power of God has a singular assignment of insisting that the word of God should not look like a lie in your life. That means whatever it will do to ensure that the word of God becomes true in your life. That is the assignment of the power of God. If it needs to move men, it will move men. If it needs to shift systems, it will shift systems. The power of God. Supernatural empowerment. When God says, let there be light. It means he's saying, let there be power. Power. Grace. Above situations and circumstances. The supernatural ability to produce God's dimension of results. Please listen to me. Whether you're in business or you're in ministry, listen to me. It takes more than intelligence. It takes more than human connections. There are dimensions of results in this life that are power dependent. Are we together? Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. I hate to tell you this, but it is true. We live in a very evil and a very wicked world. The Bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness. I think it was last year during one of the miracle services in Abuja. We prayed for a woman who was over two years pregnant. You would see a stomach with every sign there, but the machine and all of that will show that there's absolutely nothing, that she's fine. And the woman was just there, and I said, "What? imagine this kind of nonsense. Who did I offend? That one is, is a child's talk. Once you are alive and on this earth, the Bible tells you Satan goes like a roaring lion. If he has not come to you, it doesn't mean he forgot. He's coming. I assure you. Job, read the book of Job. Where are you coming from? He said, to and fro. So when he's to, the ones that are fro, they're thinking... <laughs> Hallelujah. Honestly, wickedness is real. Demons are real. Yes, sir. I had the privilege of having a crusade in my village over uh, the, the year end, and it was such a phenomenal time. It was, it was an honor for me to now have the opportunity to reach my own people very definitely. And um, as soon as I got in there, I knew that demons are in this place i mean no in all fairness in all fairness i i knew that i'm not saying it's, it's not it's not a negative statement i just knew that this was a territory that was immersed you, you can feel the atmosphere that someone is being cheated by the presence of these demons they have trapped either with wrong mindsets wrong philosophies are, are you are we together now 
and the liberating power of the word of God. Can I tell you? Electricity moves innocently until you stand its way. Have you seen someone arrogantly hold a high tension wire and hang there and drive there as a lesson? Just because it is innocent and is moving in a straight line does not mean it is stupid. You stand near it and it will shock everything that. Can... <laughs> So, don't you think the power of God is just light like a, a gentleman, European's understanding of light. There is a dimension of God's power that is vicious and violent. Not to you, but to anything that is antichrist. This year, anything that fights the way of God in your life, in the name of Jesus, may the light of God come as his power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he kept acting like a lamb till he went to hell. He was not a lamb in hell. When he got there, he scattered whatever he could scatter and went to Satan and said, give me the keys. And came out victorious. I thought Satan would chase him. You read your Bible. Whether Satan chased him and said, let me try. No. All that nonsense happened on earth. Right there, he collected the keys and came out victoriously. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. That could not go. Let me tell you, this is the year you will live as if Satan does not exist. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, when we were growing up, there are times you fight and beat someone and run away. Because you are not sure of the victory. You beat the person, but you, are, you, are, you think it's by luck. Maybe someone had beaten before you finished it up. But there is settled victory. When Jesus resurrected, he was not in a hurry to go out of the grave. There is a kind of victory that you walk with authority. You know that indeed for you, it is finished. Someone prophesy to your destiny. It is finished. That that verdict will be enforced in your life. In the name of Jesus. And no power in hell, no witchcraft, no operation of darkness will stand against that word. what I'm telling you. You know the excellency of light when it is dark. Dear people, hear me. The light of God also means access to his power. Paul said to know the power that raised Christ from the dead. It takes light to know that kind of power. Hallelujah. I have seen heavy duty generators like heavy duty generators that power stadiums you see these generators and they look like houses and they generate such power i have seen magnets that pick cars at seaports they literally will magnetize a car and pick it up like a piece of paper and move it wherever and drop it there bar mag a magnet just pick it up. Pick choppers, helicopters, and just pick them like this, like pieces of paper. Can I tell you, when something is too heavy, it's not that it's too heavy. It's what is trying to lift it that is too small. There are some of you, you've tried to lift certain things, and you lifted others, but ah! Others, you just stop there. But there is something God will do in your life. 
and energizing of the spirit of god listen have you forgotten that when jesus went up the mount of transfiguration remember with peter james and john there were a few disciples who met an epileptic patient and they sincerely approached the person to cast out the demons look at how they wasted their time and embarrassed themselves there because the power was not there and jesus came down and the bible says hear the mystery over somebody who was a demoniac read your bible the bible says jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit how in you think if those guys were given a chance to try again they will get it would they know that there was a relationship between deaf and dumb and an epileptic patient he didn't say he rebuked the spirit of epilepsy from a deaf and dumb patient a, a, an epileptic person he rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit the man shook and that was it the disciples came to jesus and said why couldn't we do this and he said this kind goeth not by fasting and many people religiously think he's saying fast much no go and read the purpose of fasting then shall your light break then shall your light break. That means there is an interruption that your flesh is providing. A measure of light that will translate to power cannot reach you. So that fasting will help you and give room so that light can come. Are we together? Very important. Supernatural empowerment. We are stepping into a season where superstitious Christianity will not work. This idea of ignoring the word, idea of ignoring God's protocol for getting genuinely anointed. Don't be anointed like a herbalist and you are suspected everywhere because of how the thing works in your life. There are people who are anointed, you don't want to be blessed by what they are carrying because of how they are doing it. You come and meet them and say my life is not going you will regret even bringing that prayer request the only thing you know is that okay yes jesus was mentioned but kai your heart at the end of it you have to go somewhere to somebody that you think is sound and say please just lay hands on me let me be sure that the last hand <laughs> that came on me was a good one no when the power of god comes by the word you can trust what it produces in the name of jesus please sit down number six am i right what is the sixth implication of marvelous light marvelous light means a showing forth a display and unveiling marvelous light means a showing forth it means a display it means an unveiling it is true. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, where we read earlier on, it says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth. That you should show forth. Listen carefully. God wants us to show forth. Do you know what it means to show forth? To show forth means to reveal something that has been locked within. There are for cars and and different fashion houses priority fashion houses they have something called a showroom is that true a showroom is where they go and display the best of their products and you are given the liberty to go and see it that's what it means that god can take you like a trophy and reveal a dimension of his power and his glory through you that will dumbfound principalities and powers is the word doxazo the showing forth remember the offense of vashti was she refused to allow the king show forth the excellency of his kingdom he wanted to display the excellency and his dominion over 127 provinces and he needed her help to make that happen and she refused the moment she rejected that participation to help show forth his kingdom she literally lost her place as queen is that true but look at what esther did to secure her position esther came and met the king and said oh king i want to put a feast for you i hope you know these are prophetic languages it's not just about feast these are natural things but you have to look deeper there is a layer a prophetic layer to scripture and stories 
It was not just about a feast. Esther came and said, King, there is something about your royalty that we need to make known. I want to put a feast for you. And the king was happy. And he said, please let her man also come. Remember? And then when she flaunted his glory so well, the king said, do this again. You are a good woman. Do it again. And she kept doing it. And she got to a particular feast called the Feast of Wines. That was where uh, her man died. It was in her commitment to showing forth the glory of the king that the enemy of the Jews died a permanent death once and for all. Can I tell you, there are certain things that are truly defeated in your life only when you commit yourself to seeing that Jesus is revealed and Jesus, I was telling the workers yesterday, is glorified. Listen, that means the year of marvelous light means a year that will be by far less of you and more of Jesus. Don't make the mistake of Vashti. You will lose what Vashti lost. Remember that Esther wanted help, but she did not come to the king and say, King, focus on me. She said, let's focus on you and the kingdom. And in focusing on the king and the kingdom, she had many things that were sorted out, including the elevation of Mordecai who sat at the gate. This is a year that when your heart and your passion and your drive is towards kingdom come, the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same, there will be many things that are not even in your prayer request that you will see them following you. Because the law is to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And he says, all other things shall be added unto you. Is that true? He said, which of you by worrying can add a cubit to his hair? Access to marvelous light means a heightened commitment towards the program and the agenda of the kingdom. I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, plant in me this year a greater passion to see Jesus revealed. In fact, the stickers, I'm sure maybe they have arrived or they are almost coming. And I hope if they arrive before service is done, we should be handing over stickers. And one of them is written, Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. That is my personal creed. It is my personal theme. Not Joshua Selman revealed. In revealing him, you are revealed. You never reveal Jesus and go obsolete. The law is in John 17 and verse 1. Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he prayed. And here's what he said. Father, the hour has come. He said, John 17 and 1. He says, glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Look up please. Look up please. The pole wire that lifts the flag up, is it down? Help me please. The pole wire has to remain up for the flag. I mean, the, you, you, you know what I mean? The, the pole now. If it's to lift a flag, it has to remain. So you're not going to lift up Jesus and go obsolete. You know, we have this idea that Jesus comes to just rob you as a, from an opportunity to shine. No, no. That was the mistake of Vashti. She thought the king was a cruel and a wicked king who did not want her to enjoy her being in the palace. And she forgot that the only reason she was queen was because she married king. If she married slave, she would be the wife of a slave. Never forget that all that you are is because of your oneness with him. Is that true? So your greatness and your dominion is derived from his greatness and his dominion. When you adopt the wisdom of Esther, then you are ready to remain on that throne for a very long time. If you adopt the foolishness of Vashti, then sooner or later something will happen and you may lose that position of dominion. God wants to display. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18, For I reckon it says, that the sufferings of this present time, he says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed where? In us. 
there is a dimension of glory that God seeks to be revealed in me and to be revealed in you. Next verse, please. 19. For the earnest expectation of cre the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. I think it is NLT or so. I hope I get that right. NLT or so that put it that God, creation is waiting for when God, yeah, Creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who His children really are. See, sometimes these newer versions help us. Sometimes they mess things up, but sometimes they really get it. Are we together? Creation is eagerly waiting this year. Not a future day again. That future is now. When God will reveal who His sons are truly are god is counting on me and he's counting on you there is a dimension of his glory that he wants to be revealed in zaria he wants to be revealed in nigeria he wants to be revealed in africa listen when i say things like this i know what comes to your mind most of you yes koinonia as a corporate body yes oh the great men and women of god but you have to personify this that revelation is not just in some man of god revealed in me revealed through me revealed in me revealed through me that god is waiting there is a dimension of the revelation of the grace the wisdom the power of god give us ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10 ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10 you will see that the manifestation of the wisdom of god is by the church ephesians 3 to the intent that now, say now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. The manifold. Wisdom manifesting as results, manifesting as prosperity. Can I tell you this? You need the light of God. Like you've heard, the economy right now, from an economic standpoint, you see the thing that is happening in our world? poverty lack and every time there is poverty and lack what naturally happens increase in crime rate i came in yesterday or day before yesterday now yes and it was it was a very sad experience yesterday it was a very sad experience when i found out that it seems like the crime rate was generally increasing that people go home and then these boys just appear and waylay people and collect valuables that is what happens because the only reason, remember, the only way Egyptians get slaves is to cause hunger. When there is hunger, everybody marches to Egypt, including God's covenant people, if they do not know what to do. The only way Israel found themselves in Egypt was hunger. Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2, remember, Jacob gathered the sons and said, Why do you look to one another? I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Genesis 42, are you helping us? 1 and 2. I heard that there is corn in Egypt. Verse 2. He said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down Tita and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. Even a prophet would die when there is no corn. Don't downplay the place of empowerment. Economically speaking, is one of the tools that Satan wants to use to subject God's people. And can I tell you, when it has to do with this subject of economic empowerment, believers are so ignorant, so ignorant, so ignorant of the ways of God. This is the year to submit yourself to learning the ways of God. The ways of God are his only bailout system from this vicious satanic antichrist system. Designed to attack your spirituality. Designed to attack your integrity. Designed to attack everything God from your life. Do you know that there was a time when women were eating their children in the Bible? Have you read that story? Do you think those mothers were wicked mothers? Do you think when they gave birth to the children, they said, now a meal just arrived? There is a way. Hunger can change people's thinking. It can make you, people think like animals. That attitude is an attitude that happens in the jungle. Where animals under extreme poverty can eat their children. But when 
suffering and hardship comes even human beings their sense of reasoning just goes away they boiled one and ate it huh? when it was time to boil the other one the woman said ah i suffered before this one arrived and the other woman said it's me that this they started that fight that was how the king came in and i tell you the level of the blessing of the lord that must come upon you to give you rest round about so that you do not find yourself in unnecessarily compromises because of economic factors may that grace rest upon you in jesus name Amen. hallelujah one guy needed a job he was close to 50 years they asked him and he said he was just in his early 30s they looked at him they said you how, how could you say this? You are in your early 30s. The guy denied and said he was in his early 30s. Now, do you think... Hold on. Praise God. <laughs> Why did he deny like that? Doesn't he have a birth certificate? You see, the, the trouble is... He believes it is cheaper to lie and go through that pain than to consider the other side of a life of suffering losing an opportunity that he's looking at as a bailout system can i tell you this please this year embrace everything god has for you anything you reject is where satan will use and enjoy you are we together now goliath covered everywhere but the place he left was the place that his death came from the bible says put the full armor the full armor that on the strength of that armor you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil if you put one or two remember it says no weapon fashioned i've taught you this fashion means it starts by observation oh this guy is very spiritual this guy is, is he prays for hours where do we check in his life ah this guy loves the lord he's committed to the things of god aha uh -huh. there we found it there is a loophole in the area of supplies that becomes the arsenal that is built against you this family loves god but there is no peace in this family and the devil says this is it i taught you how to bind yesterday right that binding from the context jesus used was division So when you embrace the entirety of God's counsel, it fortifies you. Can I tell you sincerely? Imagine with me for a moment, now I've come to Zaria and because I've arrived, maybe I have some needs and the needs are pressing. Not necessarily just talking about money. I'm using it as a case study. And after ministering to you so passionately, I now remember that, ah, I have a need. Maybe some rent somewhere or something somewhere. And I just carry a basket, not genuinely challenging you to sow. I now begin to manipulate you. You, pastor, you have one million, bring out 500,000. You see, because there is some kind of one of the ways, listen, one of the ways, one of the ways that God helps you to walk in, in integrity is to make His grace provide everything you need. Are you getting what I'm saying now? yes when god gives you food you will hardly be tempted to steal satan came to jesus and his temptation his temptation was along the lines of hunger because he had fasted 40 days is that true imagine if satan came and said if you are god run a marathon that will not go well he, his first port of call was addressing the place of hunger can i tell you I'm going to give you a few demands, requirements to help you. But one of the things that you must trust God to do is that every area of your life that is yet to reflect victory through light, this should be the year you contend with the word of God. Is that true? Write this down if you can. Marvelous light therefore means a season where there is unusual grace marvelous light therefore means a season where there is an unusual grace a season where there is an unusual grace 
to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom a season where there is an unusual grace to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom and on the strength of that light command on questionable levels of authority and power a season where there is unusual grace to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom comma and on the strength of that light command on questionable levels of authority and power and on the strength of that light command on questionable levels of authority and power marvelous light therefore means a season where there is an unusual grace to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom and on the strength of that light command on questionable levels of authority and power ultimately leading to the revelation of jesus christ command on questionable levels of authority and power ultimately leading to the revelation of jesus christ but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. Oh, thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. On questionable levels of authority and power, by light by light not by luck not by chance by light you can handle the light of the word of god and know that tomorrow is guaranteed you don't have to enter tomorrow to know light has gone forth and you know marvelous light is a season where there is an unusual grace to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom and on the strength of that light command on questionable levels of authority and power ultimately leading to the revelation of jesus christ if you're with me say amen now listen very carefully as it is with every promise of scripture there are demands or requirements everything you desire to see actualized in your life there are demands or requirements if you are just aware of the promises alone you may be very very disappointed it is important for you to know what it takes the demands for making that prophetic word become real in your life are we together So I want to list for you about four or so demands. You want this year to truly be the year of marvelous light. There are demands. But let me say this as a preamble. The word of God is God's principal channel for accessing light. Please do not forget this. There are no two ways of accessing light. The word of God is god's principal channel for accessing light psalms 119 verse 130 psalm 119 verse 130 the word of god is god's principal channel for accessing light it says the entrance of thy words giveth light the entrance of thy word giveth light the entrance not just the reading the entrance of thy word giveth light and it giveth understanding to the simple the entrance of thy words giveth light and understanding unto the simple acts chapter 20 and verse 32 acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up it says and to give you an inheritance pay attention among them which are sanctified i commend you to god 
Then I commend you to the word of his grace. And he says it is able to build you up. And then to give you an inheritance. The word of God is God's principal channel for accessing light. And when I say the word of God, it means the written word, but also the spoken or revealed word. Don't forget. You are my daily bread. Remember that song? Your very word spoken to me. So, there is the written word, there is the revealed word, or the spoken word. And the Bible says that both are able to bring light to the believer. Demand number one. We must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. This is the first demand. If you want to be a lavish recipient of marvelous light this year and hence, you must be, you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Please write it down. You must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Not just any kind of knowledge. Exact spiritual knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and you read verse 6. It says, My people that they are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest unto me my people even though they are my people they become victims of the vicissitudes of life because they lack knowledge you must have a passion and a thirst for knowledge if you really want to access light you must have a passion. Remember Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Ask it says. And it shall be given to you. Seek. And it says ye shall find. Knock. And it says it shall be opened to you. The law is in verse 8. For everyone. Everybody say everyone. Not the preacher. Not the businessman. Not the woman of God, not the man of God, not the intercessor. Everyone that truly asketh, receiveth. Everyone that truly seeks, finds. And everyone who truly knocks, the door shall be open. This is a year to ask. Amplified says, ask and keep asking. Seek and keep seeking. It says, knock and keep knocking. Lord, why are things not working in my life? it didn't work for my father it didn't work for my mother i have come as light this is my year of marvelous light spirit of god you are the spirit of light breathe your light upon me and you begin to search number two the second demand are you ready if you want to access marvelous light you must be meek and teachable you must be meek and teachable james chapter 1 and verse 21 you must be meek you must be teachable therefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness it says the engrafted word which is able to save your souls you receive with not just with faith you know what meekness is a measure of your teachability i too know has destroyed so many people in fact ethically you know those who know by their passion to know more the moment you see people who have a drive to know more is proof that they know the moment you see people who look satisfied you know immediately that they do not know anything. Is that true?
I made up my mind. I prayed this word into my own life. And I said this indeed will be a year of marvelous light. An expansion in my mind and my understanding. Access to superior dimensions of truths. Beyond that which I have known. Listen. Do not allow what you know stop you from knowing what you need to know. What you know can stop you from knowing what you need to know. Acts chapter 18. Give us Acts chapter 18, please. What's that song? Something is brewing. And I will never be never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence i will never be i'll never be satisfied so here i am fill me up with your presence desperate for more desperate for more and a hunger and a thirst that regardless what God has done in your life regardless what God has done in this ministry we will seek him and pursue him like we just got saved listen, listen beware of arrival mentality arrival mentality has killed and destroyed people from stepping into higher and more superior levels of their prophetic destiny Hallelujah. There was a book I kept looking for as soon as I arrived, Zaria. I was checking and when I saw it, I was smiling. I said, finally. I thought the book was missing. There was something I once read in it that I needed so much now. And when I found it, I said, thank God I bought this book. I'm not sure that book will be available again. Because our generation does not value knowledge. Value shoes, value hair, value... Nothing's wrong with those things, but we don't value knowledge. Yet it is knowledge that gives birth to those things. Can I tell you, you must make up your mind that you will kill laziness like a thief. Like um, how, how you attack an arm robber and kill... The, you must attack laziness and take it out of your life. I'm tired for doing nothing. No, you have to sit down. My destiny. There are millions of people waiting and I must stretch myself. In the name of Jesus Christ, run away, kill laziness from your life. Wake up and study. And can I tell you this? We are, one of the mistakes I'm seeing with our generation is that because study requires a lot of time, many people prefer prayer to study. Because prayer, at least you can walk around and pray in tongues. You don't know what you are saying, so you just keep saying the Holy Ghost knows what. Can I tell you, you need both. You, you keep praying, praying, praying and stepping into prophetic realms from a wordless angle, you will step into superstition. That's why you see people keep at being admitted in Shika who, who keep praying in tongues and then, I mean, come on, please, doctors, you talk to me. Do you know what leads to that kind of thing? Because once there is no word base, anything you are building does not have a foundation. And spirits are waiting for hunger. The moment they see you at the edge, the corridors of the realm of the spirit, unguided by the word, they are happy to escort you. You've not been there, so anything that leads you, you think is God. That's why you see people coming back with revelations that don't make sense. They don't add up from scripture. Yet the people really had those revelations, but not from God. Hallelujah. If you've never seen a particular fruit, any name they call it is what you will call it too. Is that true? There are fruits that are not in Nigeria. If they give it any name, you will call it till the day you embarrass yourself in the presence of those who know the name. They say, who told you that? Says my teacher. 
Gentlemen, hear me please. Let me encourage you. Believers, it is the ministry of the word and prayer. God does not call himself prayer. He calls himself the word. You find out why. I'm not downplaying prayer. You know that already. But many, especially younger ministers, they are getting into all kinds of casualties spiritually. Because it looks like our generation rates spirituality by your level of dissipating energy in prayer. So someone comes with a husky voice and says, I've been praying eight hours. Ask the person, what to teach me how to pray? He said, just pray. What do you mean just pray? The disciple said, teach us to pray. It was not lack of prayer. There is a bankruptcy of doctrine and stability. It's why regardless of all the things we keep doing, the devil keeps moving because it's like a, 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 a footballer who, who is running around the field but there is no ball. What are you doing there? Are we together now? You are an athlete but not a footballer. You are playing soccer and you have never seen the ball. You are not even interested. The ball has lost its air, is in the air and is lying down somewhere there. And yet you've been running around for hours. The value of your running is that you are pushing a ball somewhere. Learn this. That's why you see a display of arrogance with no results. No. Most of what we are doing now cannot go outside beyond Africa. That most of these gospels are sponsored by suffering. I, I tell you sincerely, when you are bankrupt, anything. I'm committed to teaching you to rise and be great by God's dimension. Listen to me. Jesus finished praying and fasting for 40 days. When Satan came, he did not mention prayer. It was, it is written. That's what drove Satan. That means even after praying 40 days, if he yielded to that temptation, he would have still died. And it will rubbish his 40 days prayer. I will never be, never be satisfied. So here I am. Fill me up with your presence. I will never be. I'll never be satisfied, so here I am. Fill me up with your rest. Listen, do you know this same thing happening happened in the 70s? The Bible says the thing that was is what is and is what is to come. History repeats itself. During the times of Papa Hagen, he was not the only one who started having this outpouring. Many of them ignored the word and he warned them. He said you will not last. The way you are ignoring the word and they delved into different versions of superstition till they died. Their names are not even in history. You would think it was only Papa Hagen that God lifted. No, he was the one who honored the word and gave it his place. And that's why he still finds his place. He was, his impact was immortalized because he placed value on the word. That was the warning by Elton. Gave many people, when, during the prophetic movement, he gave a warning. He said, do not ignore the word. Once you ignore the word, the only thing that will replace the word is culture. Are you learning something tonight? There are believers today who don't have Bibles. I have on my phone. Go and buy a Bible and, and, and settle down and sit down in your room alongside the one on your phone. Sit down. Do you eat online? Hey, look at me. The, the Bible says you live by two things. Bread and... So common sense should teach you. There's nothing wrong with... You can see the food online. You can learn how to cook online. But when it has to do with eating... It's not a doctrine. It's my opinion, but it's scriptural. You know lazy people by all these flimsy excuses they give. That's why they don't study Bibles. And that's why the devil can deceive people into all kinds of things. Appear as an angel of light. And you keep saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you are following sincerely until you find out that you are entering darkness. The more you are following what is not looking like God. Please, let's return to the place of the word. When you give the word precedence, your prayer will find value. The, the Bible talks about praying amiss. 
the Bible talks about many conditions that can stop prayer. We need to return to doctrine. Believers mature through the ministry of the word and prayer. Jesus calls himself the word. Go and find out why. Are we together? You see all kinds of revelations filling the church right now. Everybody waking up everywhere with all kinds of things. They may be sincere and well-meaning people. But that is the side effect. That is the side effect. Of not having a balanced, sound, doctrinal approach to growth. Exaggerations here and there. Imbalances here and there. And you see the lopsidedness in believers. You don't see stature and balance. Number three, we must be determined to see the light of God manifest in every area of darkness in our lives. The third demand to experience marvelous light, we must be determined to see the light of God manifest in every area of darkness in our lives. Luke chapter 15, please. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1, but our verse of emphasis is 9. Pay attention, please. We must be determined to see the light of God manifest in every area of darkness. Here's what Jesus said. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. And now he's teaching. The Pharisees murmured and said, this man received sinners. I hope I'm right on that. Did I? Luke 15. Okay, let's see. Verse, um, please go to verse 9. Let me test what I'm reading first so we don't waste our time. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, continue. Please go to verse 3 now. Jesus spake a parable to them, and this is what he said. Verse 4. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does he not leave the ninety, the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost to find it? Do you know what this means? Just because he has ninety-nine of the sheep present, does not mean he should allow the one to be lost. This is the season where you will thank God for what he has done. But you will pursue the other areas that do not yet have results. Are you seeing that now? Verse 5. Help us media, what are we doing wrong? And when he had found it, he says, he laid it on his shoulders and he was rejoicing. Next verse. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Thank God for the one that has been found, but my attention is on the one which was lost. Ladies and gentlemen, thank God for the ones you have found, but find the ones that are lost. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. He said, I say unto you, likewise, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Now, this is the example that, that, that um, interests me here. It says, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, how many did she lose? Let me tell you how the devil works. He will make only one to be missing. After all, you have nine more. If you keep quiet, ten is one plus one plus one plus one till it reaches ten. Zero is ten minus one minus one minus one minus one. Satan does not take nine. He will take one and, and say, no, 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 everything is all right. It's just your finances that are suffering slightly. Remember, prayer is still fine. Word life is still fine. Your common sense is still fine. You are not mad. You are all right. Once you leave it, the pressure from your finances will affect your spiritual life. That one has gone now. One is powerful. Oh. It took one man to get us saved. It took one man to put us in trouble. 
One is very powerful. We have one president. There is one CEO of Facebook. One many things, good or bad. One head. And yet, this is what leads people to all kinds of troubles. Now, let's follow. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, what is the first thing she does? Help me, read it. Do not light a candle. That's the first thing she does. It is vain to start searching for what is missing in darkness. The moment anything is missing, your first assignment is light. Your second assignment is a broom. There are things that are too delicate. It's not just your eyes that finds it. You know it's within this region, but you need the broom. <laughs> ah! To sweep that house, I know it's somewhere in the house. I know that the scripture that will liberate me is here. I don't know where exactly you need that broom and sweep everything. You will sweep rubbish but keep sweeping. And you will sometimes, as you sweep under the bed, with that bed it will come something you did not even know you had lost. So this is the thing that I've been looking for. That's where it hid. A broom is powerful or it's a mystery. Are we together? Do not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she finds it. That everything that is missing ah, shall be returned unto me. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Listen. Can I tell you this? Thank God for what you have. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to begin to seek the areas where there are losses. Recovery is a possibility at the instance of light. It's time to light that candle and it's time to begin to sweep. You sweep by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You sweep by diligence. When you read several books relating to that topic, you are sweeping. There is something about faith I don't know. I, I just know that my result is within the realm of faith, but I've not quite gotten it. And you get three materials, like measles. And you begin to sweep the subject of faith till one sentence, you say, this is it. I found it. Can I tell you? When you meet people who are sweeping, they can listen to a one hour message for 10 hours. Because after five minutes you pause. Could it be here? I thought something that looked like, I, 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 I don't know what it is, but my spirit is telling me there is something. You know how dogs find military dogs? They keep sniffing and sometimes they come near a region. There's something there. The thief is hiding there. You can't see him, but the dog is saying he's there. Don't argue. Later you shift something and you can get whatever you are looking for. Your spirit can search. You just pass a book and you say, what is it about this book? The title doesn't look so nice. It looks too old. Or you just see a scripture. Or sometimes you just flip to a channel and just for five minutes. And the Holy Ghost said, that's it. It was that scripture I want to. Now add it to the one I started teaching you two weeks ago. And you will see it will now make sense. That becomes your weapon of victory. You must know how to sweep. Many lazy Christians just read one verse on faith and you say, I don't have the kind of... Do you know what it takes to build? How many blocks make a skyscraper? They are all blocks, but question, how many? You don't put three blocks and have a skyscraper. You don't put 1,000 and have a skyscraper. You keep adding. You keep adding. You keep adding. This is the year where you will become students of scripture please in the name of jesus the son of the living god i beseech you be students of scripture this year security should even discourage you from loitering around stay at home and learn this loitering up and down you will put yourself in trouble you are not yet fortified you are moving around they will kidnap you stay and learn 
listen listen this is a fatherly advice listen i'm i'm counseling you before you go and stand before pharaoh make sure you have spent time seeing the burning bush we have many believers with blind blind bold faces that they do they have not yet gotten their spiritual fortification and they can get up and go and begin to dare the enemy in ignorance when david stood before goliath he was prepared are we together when she loses one piece because of that one piece she will give herself no rest she will pursue 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 get that light and get that boom spirit of the living god when my father got here he could not move further spirit of the living god my elder ones got there and they marked time i'm willing to break that barrier for the sake of those who are coming and you add fasting to it this gluttony that has made our sin hazy in the night the holy ghost just wakes you and do you know there are times you sit down like you are hearing someone talk to you you think you are talking to yourself but it's not only you mm. the holy spirit does not just have to talk to you he can talk in you he's still the one talking have you had times when you were walking around the room and talking like you are discussing but it's truly not you you know that the intelligence coming from that conversation is not you you are offering solutions and you are the one talking I, I don't mean word of knowledge you are talking intelligently your mind is involved but you are not the only one and you are discussing issues in life and quickly you have to start writing hear me the holy spirit does not just talk to you he can talk within you out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living water here here Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. That's what happens. And out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. When you expand yourself and allow the glorious light of God come. Brothers and sisters, this is how many of you will be walking around and the Holy Spirit will sing through your voice. Songs will come out. You don't have to be a musician. You are giving him allowance. Revelations are coming out. Why don't you call this person and you will think you are the one talking many believers are not sensitive it takes light it takes light ah i'm telling you i'm just seeing fire this is what i'm just seeing i just saw fire resting on people <laughs> Listen, when you make up your mind, that I want to see the glory of God revealed entirely in my life. You are in ministry, you are a sound teacher, but there's no signs and wonders. Or like I said earlier on, God has sorted you in the area of prayer, but in the area of word content and doctrine, there is nothing there. It's time to contend for these areas. And Abraham was old and well stricken 
and God had blessed him in all things. Number four, very quickly. Please sit down, we're going to pray shortly. Please help someone. I'm seeing somebody run out right now by the anointing. Just help that person. I don't know. I just saw light. And I saw it carrying literally. Somebody running by the Spirit of God. You don't have to bring them out. someone here I just saw that light someone here I just saw light here Before, very quickly, we're out of time. Write this down, please, everyone. Just help those under the anointing. You must be committed to the gathering of the saints. The fourth demand, as far as accessing marvelous light is concerned, you must be committed to the gathering of the saints. You must be committed to the gathering of the saints. Psalm 73 and verse 17. Psalms 73 and verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I. I needed that level of understanding but until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood I there is a kind and a measure of understanding you may not have in your personal place you need to be in the house of God grafted and bonded in love together with fellow believers until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood I. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 tells us to not neglect the gathering of the saints. Hebrews 10 and verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, it says, as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching he says not forsaking the assembly listen believers let me tell you this one of the ways that the devil cheats believers is this false and misguided concept and idea of knowing god for yourself you see that and i understand those who advocate these things i know what they are trying to say but can i tell you the truth you find out what God gave to make sure man knows him. And you will know that it's difficult to just know God like that. He gave the Holy Spirit. Number two, he gave the fivefold ministry. So that believers will know him and mature. The Bible says, now for a long time Israel had no knowledge of the true God, no teaching priest and no law. And everybody did as they wanted. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and I will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding find out those who learn how to drive by themselves and those who were taught how to drive you will see the difference those who learn how to drive only learn how to move the car those who are taught how to drive are taught 
there is we have in zaria here a college and institute for transport is driving so hard what is a college doing go and drive a truck go and drive a trailer just because you've been making mistakes driving for many years and no car has hit you yet does not mean you are getting it right can i tell you this jesus took time to teach and mentor and train the people look at the ratio of teaching to impartation three years to one night jesus look at the ratio of his teaching to impartation believers must be mentored and they must be methodically built in doctrine and established in righteousness i will give you pastors according to mine heart and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding are we together do not neglect the gathering of the saints there is something that only happens when the saints gather acts chapter 8 from verse 30 the verse of emphasis is 35 we're wrapping up very quickly please Acts 8 30 the bible says and philip this was the encounter of philip and the utopian enoch the bible says philip ran tether to him and heard him read prophet isaiah he was trying to know he was not a dull man he was sincere but there are some things that you must be taught jesus christ at age 12 where was he found doing what the word what is the word doing in the temple if the word did not bypass the need to be taught then everybody must embrace the gathering of the saints for the purpose of growth and light and knowledge he said understandest thou what thou readest he said how can i except someone should guide me that someone is who god has sent to you and he desired philip that he should come and sit with him then the place of the scripture they read it like that verse 35 for sake of time let's go to 35 quickly and philip opened his mouth the bible says and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus christ that man would have remained in his confusion even though his bible was open just because you open your bible does not mean you will see everything god wants you to see the gathering of the saints is very important you must make up your mind this year that in pursuit for the experience of marvelous light you must be determined by the spirit you must be determined by the spirit that you are going to not neglect the gathering of the saints can i tell you this i wrote something down here that you must you can have so much of the light of god within you that you become the marvelous light yourself now not that you are looking for it you are so full of that light you become the light yourself are we together remember that song do since then as i look at your face i become the light not just that i have it you can become it question are you not a product of the food that you eat you eat the food but eventually you pass the waste away but that food builds you you are literally what you eat doctors will tell us that you are what you eat you eat nonsense that's exactly what you become you eat health that's what you become you eat death that's what you become that means there is a level of light that you can access to a point where you become what the bible calls living epistles you are now the light you are scripture in motion you open the pages of scripture through your life illumination personified in acts chapter 9 when you read from verse 1 to 6 just write it down for reference our time is up already 
this was the story of Saul let's look at verse 4 just for sake of time the Bible says that when he or go to verse 3 he was breathing out threats to go and persecute the people the Bible says he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined about him a light from heaven and we understand that Jesus himself was saying I am that light that you have been persecuting in Acts chapter 26 when you read from verse 12 Paul was making his defense before King Agrippa and he began to speak giving that discussion he said whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the high priest very quickly at midday O king he's narrating his experience I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about and them which journeyed with me 14 and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking to me saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks 15 and I said who art thou Lord so light can be a person that's that's what I'm trying to drive at I am Jesus that light is Jesus and he says you are the light not just that you have it you are it so ultimately it's not just for you to have the light that you have the light so much that a metamorphosis begins to happen then you become the light read on 7 16 now but rise and stand for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee i didn't just appear to show you I didn't just appear to tell you I started by showing you I started by telling you but ultimately the purpose is to make thee, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of the things which I will appear unto you read verse 17 together delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send thee 18 to open their eyes now you are doing to them what the light did to you the light opened your eyes and now because you have become the light you now go as that light you open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith Are you seeing that now so it is not just that you have the light but that you become the light an expression of the possibilities of the kingdom personified in an individual listen to me our focus this year as a ministry will remain equipping and empowering God's people through the sound and accurate communication of doctrine and we remain committed to helping God's people experience the fullness of the manifest power of God. Please pay attention. As a ministry, we will not relent on undertaking this task and to do so faithfully from nation to nation. Let the last scripture be Isaiah 49 and verse 6. This will be our drive as a ministry this year. The mandate is to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49 and verse 6 and he said it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel let's read the remaining part as a family one to read I will also give thee for a light hold on hold on hold on who will be the light I will not just give light I will give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation how far to the ends of the earth to the ends of the earth so through our koinonia services a school of ministry both here and abuja our external ministrations our media ministry counseling and prayers international conferences and every other arm of expression that god would activate this year 
we must remain resolved resolute and committed as a people who love jesus and are determined to see him revealed and to see him glorified i trust that in our next meeting i would have the time to share i did a bit of that already to the workers some of our conferences by god's grace both national and international and all the things that we have to do this year as god grants us grace but hear me dear people of god it is indeed a year of marvelous light for us and i've taken the time to share with you it will truly be an outpouring of light and power and grace our simple assignment for the next five minutes is to pray this into our lives and to usher the year officially to begin for us as a year of marvelous light please rise i want you to lift up your voice and begin to personify this prophetic word everywhere inside and outside decree and declare it is my year of marvelous light now you know what you are talking about it is my year of supernatural insight access to scripture it is my year of uncommon understanding it is my year of life my year of power signs and wonders go ahead and pray my year of marvelous life in the name of jesus receive it for yourself receive it for your family receive it for your ministry receive it for your place of work receive it for your destiny in the name of jesus Please pray. Arise, shine, the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, shine, the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Please pray. Arise, shine, my light is come. I see the glory of the Lord risen upon me. Arise, shine, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I like you to mention every aspect of your life and declare supernatural illumination go ahead and declare let the redeemed of the Lord say so mention every aspect of your life and decree and declare by the Spirit that in the name of Jesus who is the Son of the Living God access to life illumination by the Spirit Hallelujah. I'd like us to pray for Koinonia, our global family, and declare that Lord, everyone connected to this vision, this indeed for them and for us all will be a year of marvelous light. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray from the depth of your heart. From Nigeria to UK to America, to Canada, every state, everywhere God has positioned men and women who are connected to this vision, we decree and declare that for all of us as a global family, our experience this year is marvelous life, even by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. We're in Zaria. I'd like you to pray for Zaria. Pray for the entire Kaduna state. You're going to command, let there be light. 
that everything that does not look like what God has said this year, remember we have the power to frame our realities by the word of God. I like you to cancel bloodshed, cancel kidnapping, cancel everything that is not of the light. Lift your voice and declare. Let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare this over Zaria. This is our Jerusalem. We make declarations and decrees by the Spirit of God. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everyone following and everyone here inside, outside, all the overflows. Indeed, I agree with the Spirit of God and I declare over you, this must be your year of marvelous light. In every aspect of your life, in the name of Jesus. And hear me. What did not answer to you in years past? This is the year it must answer finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every confusion, every darkness, every gloominess, everything that is not of God, I declare it leaves your life permanently. You will rise by light and revelation. You will reign by light and revelation. You will be distinguished by light and revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. That this year when men say there is a casting down. I prophesy to you that for you there will be a lifting up. You will not fall by the sword. Death will not have its toll on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In your going out be blessed. In your coming in be blessed. Be blessed in the city. Be blessed in the country. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The Gentiles that have been assigned to come to your light, wherever they are, we call them to gravitate towards your light. In the name of Jesus Christ. In spite of all the things that are happening around the globe, I prophesy to you, this will be your best year ever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone keep standing. This is our first service in Zaria. There are people inside here and all the overflows scattered. You are saying, Apostle, I came here. The first light Paul encountered was not an information. It was a person. And the first light, every non-believer must encounter it's not just an information it's a person there are people here you are saying apostle i do not want to start the year the way i did last year i want to make it right genuinely with jesus others are saying i need restoration in my spiritual life i remember giving my heart to jesus but as it is right now my life is not in its rightful place and i want to start this year right wherever you are we have one minute for you please whether you are inside or outside, I want you to run and come and stand here. I want to pray with you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Run and come and stand before Jesus here. I'll count one to five and we're done. One. Start the year with Jesus. Two. Please allow those who are coming to come. Three. Are you still coming? Start the year properly with Jesus. Receiving his life, no guesswork, no assumptions. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? Come. Come running, come running, come running to the mercy seat. Four. His grace will flow freely. It will flow by my healing. I'm running to the mercy. 
Thank you so much for the time and the courage to come and stand before Jesus. The Bible declares that everyone who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Woman, where are thine accusers, he said. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Lift your right hand very high to the heavens. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. Please, if you are joining them, come very quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I declare that I cannot help myself. I need you. I declare that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. From today, I am a child of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these precious people. Thank you, O oh God, for confirming your word. Thank you for as many who have come to give their lives to Jesus and to rededicate their lives. I declare by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that the Lord grants you a new beginning. I commend you to the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be established and grounded in righteousness. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.